In the boundless expanse we call space, there is a realm of endless possibilities and age-old mysteries that have fascinated humanity for centuries. Join us on a captivating journey as we delve into the enigmatic depths of the universe, tracing its evolution from the dawn of time to the distant future. Together, we'll explore the wonders of the cosmos, all while pondering on the big question, is there an edge to our universe? The universe is vast, and there's something intriguing we haven't figured out yet. It makes us wonder and ask questions. This mystery is about what lies beyond the universe. As we explore space, we find that what we see is just a fraction of it. What's beyond this boundary remains unknown, like a cosmic veil concealing the secrets of existence. Contemplating what's out there is akin to a profound philosophical question. How do we comprehend things we cannot observe or understand? It's a challenging puzzle that encourages us to think deeply, igniting our curiosity and driving us to seek solutions. Everything we can see, whether it's the things in a room or the distant galaxies we observe with powerful telescopes, is part of what we call the observable universe. Right now, scientists estimate that the observable universe stretches about 46.5 billion light years away. But here's the puzzling part. The universe itself is only 13.8 billion years old. How does that make sense? Well, it's all because the universe is expanding. As it expands, the places where light originates move farther away from us. So, even though the universe might be infinite in size, our view is limited to about 46.5 billion light years due to this expansion. Think of this boundary as the edge of what we can observe in our universe. Imagine looking up at the night sky. You might notice that it's not filled with stars everywhere. That's because light can only travel so far before it reaches us on Earth. It's like there's an invisible barrier around us. Beyond that barrier, there are billions more stars and galaxies waiting to be seen. This barrier is called the particle horizon. Now, there's also something called the event horizon, but it's not the same thing. The particle horizon marks the distance from which light from the past reaches us. On the other hand, the event horizon is about the distance from now to an observer in the future. But there's another limit to consider called the Hubble horizon. If space objects are beyond this boundary, we can't see them, even if billions of years pass. They're constantly moving away from us at the speed of light. So, it might seem like there's a limit to the universe, but really, it's just the limit of how far light can travel. Imagine when we gaze at bright objects in space, like stars or the sun, the light from them doesn't zip over to us instantly. For instance, the sun is about 94 million miles away, and it takes about 8 minutes for its light to reach us here on Earth. Another star, Proxima Centauri, is even farther, about 4.2 light years away, so it takes roughly 4.2 years for its light to reach us. This means that what we see in the sky is actually stuff that happened a while back. So, when we look up at the stars at night, it's kind of like peering into the past. Picture a galaxy such as HD1, sitting way out there in space about 13.4 billion light years away. If we want to know what's happening there right now, we'd have to wait a whopping 13.4 billion years for the light to finally reach us. Of course, that's if there are no roadblocks along the way, like black holes swallowing up the light. But if we could get a good look at this distant galaxy, we could learn a ton about how our own galaxy formed way back when the universe was just a youngster. That's why studying light is super important. It helps us piece together how the universe has changed over its long history. And it's thanks to this kind of study that we came up with the Big Bang Theory. During the initial phases of the Big Bang, temperatures soared to extreme levels. At this juncture, the formation of atoms was hindered as electrons and protons were unable to bind together. The intense heat caused photons, the fundamental particles of light, to scatter or be absorbed, restricting the distance light could travel. This created an opaque environment akin to a dense fog enveloping the universe. However, approximately 380,000 years later, the universe began to cool allowing the first stable atoms to materialize. 
This transition rendered the cosmos transparent, enabling light to traverse vast distances unimpeded. The residual light from this epoch, known as cosmic microwave background radiation, persists at a temperature slightly above absolute zero. Despite originating from a staggering distance of 13.8 billion light years away, this radiation is observable from Earth in all directions. Consequently, scientists posit that the universe's age, as inferred from such observations, aligns with its estimated lifespan, although it could potentially signify the extent of our observational capabilities. Now, here's the catch. The cosmic microwave background, or CMB for short, isn't visible to the naked eye. Initially, the intensity of this first light is exceedingly faint due to the expansion of the universe. We'll delve into this concept further later on, but essentially, the stretching of light waves during this expansion diminishes their strength, placing them within the microwave portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Despite its relatively low power, the CMB serves as a window into the early history of the universe, providing scientists with a glimpse into its formative stages. Thanks to the Large Hadron Collider, our understanding of the Big Bang and the subsequent development of the universe has significantly advanced. Picture a map of the sky displaying temperature fluctuations in relic radiation, resembling a pattern of distinct spots. In this map, cooler regions appear blue, while warmer areas are depicted in orange. These spots serve as crucial indicators for scientists studying the evolution of stars and galaxies, revealing points of density fluctuations, often referred to as seeds of structure formation, within the cosmic microwave background. The presence of larger spots spanning one degree across the sky lends support to the notion of a flat universe. Conversely, the smaller spots yield valuable insights into the composition and age of the universe. Analyzing the temperature variations observed in the CMB provides further confirmation of the existence of dark matter and dark energy underscoring their significance in shaping cosmic phenomena. In 2003, a team of astronomers, led by D. N. Spergel, made a groundbreaking discovery regarding the abundance of dark matter and dark energy compared to regular matter. Recent measurements indicate that dark matter constitutes approximately 26.8% of the universe's total mass, while dark energy comprises a significant 68.3%, leaving ordinary matter as a relatively small component. Moreover, analysis of the cosmic microwave background, CMB, has provided scientists with insights into the rate of expansion of the universe, estimated at about 42 miles per hour per megaparsec. The CMB serves as a valuable resource for modern science, offering a wealth of information about both the early and current state of the universe. In essence, it acts as a guide for understanding potential future developments in cosmology. The SMV and the Space Horizon both put limits on what we can see from Earth. Now, let's delve into what Space Horizons are and whether we can peek beyond them. We previously discussed the cosmic particle horizon, which acts as an imaginary boundary defining the extent of our observable universe. It marks the furthest distance that light from the distant past can travel to reach us. If celestial objects lie far beyond this horizon, they remain beyond our current visual reach. However, there's a potential workaround to this limitation in our quest for space exploration. Despite the fact that our particle horizon isn't fixed and light continues its journey over vast distances, we often require specialized instruments to observe additional objects. Yet, direct observation beyond this horizon remains elusive. Here's where things get intriguing. Enter the neutrino. Neutrinos are minuscule particles with almost negligible mass and minimal interaction with matter. This unique property allows them to travel great distances, nearly at the speed of light. Neutrinos are generated during various cosmic phenomena, such as nuclear processes within stars or supernova explosions. Remarkably, even events occurring hundreds of billions of light years away can be detected on Earth through the arrival of neutrinos. Moreover, neutrinos have the ability to transform into particles with even lower energy levels during their journey. 
Due to their elusive nature, scientists are continuously enhancing detection technologies. In the future, these elusive particles hold promise in unveiling the mysteries lying beyond the cosmic horizon. In addition to neutrinos, there's another fascinating method for us to explore the universe beyond what's visible to the naked eye. This involves gravitational waves, which are essentially ripples in the fabric of space, time caused by significant cosmic events like the collisions of black holes, neutron stars, or the orbital dances of stars around each other. When these events occur, they generate waves that propagate outward in all directions at the speed of light. While these waves can slightly distort and stretch the space between smaller objects they encounter, by the time they reach Earth, they've weakened considerably and pose no threat. However, similar to neutrinos, detecting them poses a challenge. The faint echoes of these waves, however, provide valuable insights into events that occurred beyond our visible universe and their distances from us. For instance, in 2016, researchers from MIT successfully detected the merger of two black holes located 1.3 billion light-years away using gravitational waves. Together with neutrinos, these waves serve as guides to explore realms beyond our immediate cosmic view. Enhancing our technological capabilities to detect and analyze them holds the key to unraveling the mysteries of the entire universe. No matter how much we delve into the mysteries of the cosmos, there's a significant hurdle we face. Our inability to directly observe stars and galaxies located in the invisible regions of the universe. Here's the deal. Following the Big Bang, the universe continued expanding, albeit at a gradually decreasing pace. However, everything in space is still moving away from each other. Every 326 light years, this expansion accelerates, primarily due to the pervasive presence of dark matter throughout outer space. As the universe expands, the particle horizon also expands accordingly. The larger it grows, the more objects that were previously beyond its reach become visible on our stellar maps. But here's the kicker. All the stars and galaxies visible to us presently will remain confined within the boundary of observable space. In the distant future, we may observe objects that are currently close to us, such as the SMB, look like faint specks in the night sky. However, due to the same expansion, numerous distant objects will recede from us at such rapid speeds that the light they emit will never reach our eyes. Furthermore, the expansion of the universe imposes limitations on another boundary known as the space event horizon. This boundary determines the extent to which signals can travel, with anything beyond this limit never reaching its intended recipient. At the moment, this limit extends to about 16 billion light years. So, even if a galaxy lies within the particle horizon, if it's beyond the event horizon, we won't be able to interact with it. Over time, a signal sent from Earth, for example, will stretch out until it reaches frequencies. Undetectable by our instruments. Additionally, the object sending the signal will be moving away from Earth, making it impossible for us to reach any potential extraterrestrial life if it's too distant. Furthermore, as time progresses, even the galaxies with which we can communicate may become too distant for us to reach due to the expansion shaping the size of this horizon. In the past, this horizon spanned about 60 billion light years, but now it's reduced to 16 billion light years. It's possible that this distance will diminish even further in the future, limiting our ability for communication and scientific advancement within our cosmic bubble. Another boundary affecting our cosmic bubble is the Hubble horizon, situated approximately 40.5 billion light years away from us. Beyond this point, space objects appear to move faster than the speed of light. The farther a light-emitting object is from this horizon, the more rapidly it seems to move away from us. For a photon, it's akin to a competition. The farther it is from Earth, the swifter its departure. Only beyond the Hubble limit will Earth cease to accelerate. The Hubble horizon is also expanding, 
allowing distant light to eventually reach our telescopes. In the future, we may observe more traces of galaxies and stars beyond this limit. However, in the distant future, the Hubble horizon will contract and diminish, halting around the galaxies of the local group. Consequently, no light from other cosmic bodies, unlike the light that has already traversed beyond, will ever reach our cosmic horizon, resulting in our isolation from the wider universe. There's more to consider. The event horizon and the Hubble horizon are expected to merge in approximately 10 billion years, forming a new boundary with a radius of 63 billion light years. Beyond this boundary, any events will be invisible to us. And over tens of billions of years, all light emitted from beyond this limit will fade away forever. Despite our insatiable curiosity, the universe imposes its own constraints, visualized as spherical horizons encircling us. These horizons prevent distant light from reaching Earth, posing challenges to our efforts to study the evolving universe. Moreover, in the distant future, these horizons will converge, obstructing light from beyond Earth and impeding our quest for further understanding of the vast cosmos. However, here's the intriguing part. Our technology is advancing rapidly. In the future, we will gather increasingly more data about deep space, thanks to advancements in detecting neutrinos and gravitational waves. Furthermore, we may even establish new horizons on other planets to explore. So, while the universe sets its limits, our technological prowess enables us to peer into its mysteries. Although we cannot eliminate these limitations, we can navigate around them. It will likely take many more generations before we can transcend our own horizon. Yet once we do, countless other horizons will await exploration. All that's required is patience. Since the dawn of our existence, humanity has marveled at the vast expanse of the cosmos. We've observed stars, charted constellations, and pondered the mysteries beyond our tiny corner of the sky. But have we ever contemplated the end? Not just the end of our individual lives, but the end of time itself. What will the final days of the universe entail? What sights, sounds, and sensations will accompany those closing moments? Will it be a grand finale, or will something entirely unforeseen unfold? Throughout history, humans have been driven by an insatiable curiosity to explore the unknown and expand our understanding. Today, we embark on our most profound journey yet, a journey to the very edge of time. Think of each passing moment as grains of sand slipping through an hourglass, drawing us inexorably closer to the ultimate fate of the universe. But when and how will this fate manifest? And what implications does it hold for ordinary individuals like us? Envision traversing vast expanses of space and time, propelling billions or even trillions of years into the future. The essence lies not in the distance traveled, but in the exploration of the eventual destiny of the entire cosmos. Welcome to the Anthropocene, the epoch of humans. This is our era, our moment in time. It's an era characterized by the profound impact our species has had on our planetary home, the blue-green orb we like to call Earth. In the blink of an eye, humanity has left an indelible mark on our planet, shaping and altering its very essence. Consider the Holocene, an epoch spanning 11 to 700 years, during which human civilization took root. This period provided us with favorable climatic conditions, fostering our development and enabling us to thrive. From our earliest days as hunter-gatherers to the technologically advanced societies of today, the Holocene nurtured the emergence of agriculture, written language, and the concept of civilization itself. However, as we progressed, the consequences of our actions became increasingly evident. Our relentless pursuit of resources and unchecked expansion have ushered in changes that herald the end of the Holocene. Weather patterns are shifting, with more frequent and severe extreme events becoming the new norm. Biodiversity is under threat, and the delicate ecological balance that has sustained us for millennia is now in jeopardy. Our actions, 
have left an enduring imprint on Earth, ushering in a new geological epoch known as the Anthropocene. This chapter in Earth's history is uniquely defined by human influence. As we transition into this new era, a crucial question looms large. What legacy will we leave for future generations? As we approach the year 2500, significant changes are underway on Earth. Our planet's protective shield, the magnetic field, is undergoing a shift. The North and South Poles are in the process of swapping places, a phenomenon that last occurred 780,000 years ago. While this natural occurrence is fascinating, it poses challenges for our technology, necessitating adaptations to accommodate these changes. Let's take a leap forward to the year 4385, where we witness the return of an old celestial companion, Comet Hale Bop. It's a breathtaking sight, illuminating the night sky with its radiant trail of light. Fast forward to the year 5000, and we confront a stark reality. The repercussions of our past actions have caught up with us. The polar ice caps have melted, leading to a widespread rise in sea levels across the globe. Many coastal communities that once thrived now lie submerged beneath the waves, mere echoes of their former existence. In the year 6000, a colossal asteroid hurtles toward Earth, poised for impact, heralding a momentous and life-altering event. Jump ahead to the year 8000 and the heavens unfold an extraordinary spectacle. A distant star approaches the twilight of its existence and erupts into a breathtaking supernova, casting a brilliant glow that outshines entire galaxies. This celestial display serves as a poignant reminder of the perpetual evolution of the universe. As we observe Earth and its cosmic dance through space, it prompts contemplation on the transient nature of existence. When we gaze upon the starry expanse above, we are reminded of the challenges that lie ahead on our journey toward the culmination of time. Fast forward one billion years, and our Sun, the source of life, undergoes profound changes. Its luminosity intensifies, causing temperatures on Earth to soar dramatically. The once verdant landscapes begin to wither as the green carpet of vegetation recedes. The atmosphere thins and oxygen becomes scarce. The relentless heat persists, and by 1.3 billion years, the vast oceans that once defined our planet begin to evaporate into vapor. Our once azure world gradually transforms into a desolate, parched landscape. The vast oceans fade into distant memories. Now, let's journey to the ultimate conclusion of Earth's narrative, reaching the 7.5 billionth year. At this juncture, the Sun undergoes a transformative shift, evolving into a red giant that engulfs our once verdant planet. This marks the culmination of our home's journey, which has nurtured and sustained life for billions of years, as it returns to the cosmic dust from whence it came. Fast forward to the year 10 billion, following the Sun's fiery demise, it is reborn as a white dwarf, a faint, cool remnant of its former brilliance. Bereft of the fiery nuclear fusion that once fueled it, the Sun now resembles smoldering embers, silently observing the grand cosmic spectacle. Zooming ahead to 100 trillion years later, a profound stillness pervades the cosmos. The once luminous stars, like radiant beacons in the night sky, gradually extinguish, casting the universe into a frigid darkness akin to twilight. Racing forward to one quadrillion years post the star's demise, the universe plunges into an icy abyss, transitioning from its fiery genesis in the Big Bang to a cosmic winter. The era of starlight fades into memory, leaving behind remnants of stars that once illuminated the cosmos, glowing faintly with ghostly light, a poignant reminder of the universe's fiery past. Approximately 10 quadrillion years later, these white dwarfs emerge as the predominant celestial entities, marking the age of degeneration, a phase where the universe resembles a spectral echo of its vibrant past, recalling the galaxies and stars that once blazed brightly. It serves as a stark reminder of the cyclic nature of birth and demise within the cosmos. 
Even in its waning moments, the universe continues to evolve. Gravity, the omnipresent force shaping the cosmos, persists unabated. It orchestrates the movements of stars and planets, occasionally birthing new stars through gravitational interactions. These newborn stars, upon their genesis, unleash dazzling supernovas, echoing the cosmic history of yesteryears. Meanwhile, over trillions of years, white dwarfs gradually fade into oblivion, cooling and shrinking until they vanish entirely, giving rise to black dwarfs, silent witnesses to the universe's descent into darkness. This marks the dawn of the era of black dwarfs, symbolizing the universe's inexorable journey into obscurity. The universe, which was once vibrant and bright, has dimmed significantly over time. It's steadily expanding and growing colder. Space itself is stretching, like fabric being pulled in all directions. This expansion is causing everything to drift apart, like islands in a vast ocean. Within this immense space, a significant change is occurring silently. Protons, the building blocks of matter, are breaking down into neutrons and photons. Essentially, the components of our world are disintegrating, leaving behind only particles of light and black holes. We're entering a new phase in the universe's journey, where familiar concepts are fading away. Black holes are becoming increasingly prominent, overshadowing everything else. Even objects like black dwarfs, which seemed everlasting, have vanished, contributing their mass to the expanding universe. Stars have turned into cosmic dust, leaving black holes as the primary, if not sole, entities in the universe. In this era where black holes reign supreme, the remnants of once bustling galaxies known as supermassive black holes take center stage. These cosmic giants formed from the deaths of massive stars or the merging of smaller black holes. They've grown immensely by devouring matter and energy on a grand scale, far surpassing our previous understanding. These monumental cosmic events emit gravitational waves, causing ripples in the fabric of space-time. Picture them as the universe's final echoes, akin to the slow-fading chime of a bell echoing across the vast expanse. Even these extraordinary phenomena, like black holes, aren't eternal as they may initially appear. In the late 1970s, Renowned physicist Stephen Hawking introduced the concept of Hawking radiation. This process describes how black holes gradually lose energy and consequently mass over time. It occurs due to peculiarities in quantum physics near the black hole's event horizon, akin to its edge. Here, particle-antiparticle pairs spontaneously appear, with one member falling into the black hole while the other escapes into space. This continual emission of particles causes the black hole to lose energy and shrink over an immensely long duration. Eventually, the once mighty gravitational pull weakens, leading to the eventual evaporation of the black hole. These occurrences mark the conclusion of the universe's last significant entities, leaving behind an expansive, seemingly infinite void. Since the Big Bang, our universe has been expanding, mainly due to something called dark energy. This mysterious force is believed to be everywhere in space and works in the opposite direction of gravity, causing the universe to grow faster. Alongside dark energy, there's also dark matter, which makes up about 85% of all the stuff in the universe. Dark matter pulls things together with gravity balancing out the expansion caused by dark energy. Currently, dark energy seems to be the dominant force, but there's a chance things could change. Some theories suggest that as the universe continues to expand, more dark matter might appear, gradually strengthening its gravitational pull. If dark matter's pull becomes stronger than dark energy's push, the universe could start to slow down or even reverse its expansion. This scenario is likened to stretching a rubber band until it snaps back, known as the Great Contraction. During this contraction, everything in the universe, like matter and energy, would become tightly packed, 
Eventually, we'd reach a critical point where everything is incredibly dense and hot, known as a singularity. At this extreme moment, the usual rules of space and time become jumbled. This singularity could potentially lead to another Big Bang, birthing a brand new universe and initiating a new cycle of existence. This journey through the universe's evolution helps us grasp our place in the grand scheme of things. It reminds us that our time here is brief compared to the vast timeline of the universe. Exploring the journey to the end of time brings us full circle back to the beginning. Perhaps in a universe teeming with endless possibilities, you've probably wondered about the distant future, maybe in a hundred thousand or even a million years. Today, let's take a peek into the future by examining how the stars in our night sky evolve. We'll focus on what our universe might look like in a hundred million years. Get ready, because in just a few moments, we'll journey from the beginning of the universe's life to its very end. Hold on tight, because in our universe, nothing lasts forever. Over the next 100 million years, the big stars we see in the night sky will disappear. Instead, we'll see vast fields of nebulae. Stars begin as huge clouds of gas and dust, evolving over tens of millions of years before shining brightly in space for millions or even billions of years. Although stars don't change much during their lifetime, they eventually begin to dim and shrink as they convert hydrogen into helium. This marks the start of their end stage, which lasts a bit less than their actual lifespan. Stars like our sun, after around nine to 10 billion years, become red giants. After billions more years, they fade away completely leaving behind remnants like white dwarfs and a mix of gas and dust from which new stars can form. However, the next 100 million years will also impact our sun. It will gradually become brighter and warmer by about 1%, and in 1 to 2 billion years it could heat up to levels that might pose a threat to life on Earth. But what if we could slow down this process? While 100 million years is an incredibly long time for humans, our scientific knowledge might advance to levels that seem like science fiction to us now. In that time frame, we might have the ability to manipulate stars and control how long they shine, thanks to a concept called stellar engineering. This could mean replenishing a star's fuel or even artificially managing its nuclear reactions. This way, we could make the sun last longer without posing a threat to life on Earth. By manipulating stars, we might even create conditions suitable for life on planets that we currently consider uninhabitable. Looking ahead, humans might develop the technology to extract hydrogen and helium from stars for energy production. As our civilization expands, relying solely on resources from planets might not be enough to sustain the growing population. That's where the idea of a theoretical Dyson Sphere comes in. This structure, which collects energy directly from a star, could help conserve resources on planets where people might live. However, if we use stellar engineering to speed up star aging by collecting fuel, it could pose risks for life near these stars. But it's not just stars that change over time, galaxies do too. Our own galaxy, which formed at the universe's beginning, is heading toward its end. Before galaxies fade away, they undergo a lengthy process of evolution, merging with others over vast periods. Smaller galaxies merge into larger ones, leading to fewer small galaxies over the next 100 million years. Additionally, the mix of spiral and elliptical galaxies might shift slightly. In the future, humans might see lots of galaxies merging, especially the smaller ones. This could create cool new structures like wavetails and supermassive black holes. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is on a collision course with another galaxy called Andromeda. But don't worry, it won't happen for about 5 billion years. In the next 100 million years, our galaxy will have moved a whopping 978,000 light years. But it won't really affect us. Over time, galaxies will shift around, finding new spots with different densities. This will change their shapes and how stars are born. But even the most dazzling galaxies of the future will fade away eventually. This happens because stars, 
especially the big ones that give galaxies their color and brightness, eventually die. After a star explodes for the last time, most of its gas stays inside the galaxy, keeping it alive. But some of it escapes, meaning fewer big stars form. As a result, the galaxy loses mass, and in millions of years, there might only be a black hole left in its place. In our universe, nothing stays still. Everything's always moving, maybe even the universe itself, since the Big Bang. The universe has been expanding ever since, even faster than the speed of light during the hot Big Bang phase. It only slowed down a bit once things cooled down and protons, neutrons and electrons formed. Over billions of years, it slowed down a lot, but both now and in the future, the universe won't stop expanding. When we talk about the universe expanding, it doesn't mean things are zooming away like cars on a highway. It's more like time itself is stretching, similar to blowing up a balloon with two dots on it. As the balloon gets bigger, the dots move farther apart. But this stretching doesn't really affect stuff held together by gravity, like our galaxy and Andromeda, or even us. The total amount of regular and dark matter always stays the same. It's just that the space between things and how much stuff is in that space changes as they spread out over a large area. However, we do notice that other galaxies seem to be moving away from us. In the next 100 million years, the galaxies in our local group might drift so far that they become harder to see. Far-off galaxy clusters like CLJ 1001 plus 0220 might become nearly invisible. But here's the tricky part. The universe's expansion is speeding up. It's gaining momentum by 44 miles per hour, and every 3.26 million light years, it gets even faster. This isn't great news for the universe's future. In millions of years, it might become harder for cosmic stuff to come together because the bits and pieces would be flying apart too quickly. The main reason for this is dark energy, which could, theoretically, counteract the pull of gravity from matter. Dark energy is a mysterious kind of energy we think exists, and it plays a big role in how time works. It could have significant effects down the line. In the next 100 million years, the expansion might speed up so much that galaxies stop merging. The dust and gas released when stars die will spread out and new stars will form less frequently. Even worse, billions of years from now, the gas leaking out might be so fast that nothing can form. No stars, no galaxies, and no life. This would lead to something called heat death eventually. The concept of heat death doesn't mean the universe will turn into a blazing inferno due to star evolution. It's actually about what might happen to the universe in the future, based on something called the second law of thermodynamics. This law says that in a closed system, disorder or entropy increases over time. Essentially, it means that energy will spread out in such a way that things can't come together. Think of a cup of tea. As it cools down, the heat escapes and spreads into the room, making the tea's temperature the same as the room. So, it won't warm you up anymore when you drink it. Similarly, in the distant future, galaxies will be too far apart, and stars will fade away because there won't be enough energy or matter for stars, planets, or other cosmic objects to form. Eventually, the universe will become completely dark and empty. But dark energy might not only lead to heat death. If the universe expands much faster in the next 100 million years, it could face total destruction. In this scenario, stars won't just stop forming. They won't exist at all. Even basic particles won't be around. Unlike matter such as stars, which stays the same and doesn't increase its mass with expansion. When the expansion becomes really fast in a few billion years, stars won't be able to handle the extra energy and will simply explode. Another potential way our universe could meet its end is called the Big Rip. This theory suggests that because we likely can't control the speeding up of expansion in around 200 billion years, it will accelerate so much that gravitational pull will be overwhelmed. Planets will stray from their orbits and eventually the force that holds stars together won't be able to resist the pull of dark energy. With even more time passing, 
atoms might not be able to resist and could be torn apart. There's a possibility that after the Big Bang, the universe could circle back to its earlier stages. However, the stuff packed into the singularity won't resemble the hot, dense plasma we started with. It'll be cold and sparsy. So even though the potential end of the universe might sound gloomy, there's a chance it could spark a fresh start. But there's another potential threat lurking within the universe, and it might be closer than we think. It could be right inside us. We're all familiar with atoms, and inside their nucleus are two tiny particles called protons and neutrons. Usually, these particles are stable and don't decay. But what if that's not always the case? Protons are pretty common in the universe and can even exist outside the nucleus. They stay stable for some solid reasons, like the laws of energy, charge, and baryon conservation. According to the standard model of physics, protons shouldn't decay at all. However, newer theories, like the grand unification theory, suggest they could break down in the distant future. There's a chance that protons might decay. This process likely won't spell disaster for the entire universe. But if it happens frequently over millions or even billions of years, parts of the universe could vanish. When protons decay, they can disrupt the nucleus of atoms and create substances from the decay that might affect the structure of the whole universe. As matter breaks down, the way galaxies evolve in areas where proton decay occurs could be disrupted. People in the future might even experience protons decaying in their bodies. However, the danger within the next 100 million years alongside heat death and the Big Bang could be even more severe. If proton decay leads to a significant and powerful collapse, it might result in a catastrophic end for the universe. But it's not just about protons alone. Picture all matter in the universe being wiped out, leaving no trace of its existence. This could happen through a theoretical phenomenon called a bubble. You've probably heard of the Higgs boson, which is a crucial part of the Higgs field, a field present everywhere in the universe. When particles interact with this field, they gain mass. The Higgs field can also affect what we think of as a vacuum. We usually imagine a vacuum as empty space, but it contains quantum fields. A vacuum tends to have as little energy as possible. The Higgs field determines whether the universe is in a true vacuum stable with the lowest possible energy, or a false vacuum, which is less stable with higher energy. According to current theories, our universe is in a metastable state, meaning it's in a false vacuum. This poses a danger for all future life and matter. In the next 100 million years, if a highly energetic event like a massive proton decay occurs, a tiny part of the universe might shift into a true vacuum state. This could lead to a bubble of true vacuum expanding at the speed of light, wiping out everything in its path, including all matter and basic particles. After such a catastrophic event, life would struggle to exist in any form. The universe as we know it would undergo a transformation, becoming completely unrecognizable. Eventually, it will continue to evolve, but like all things, it will eventually fade away. We can't say for sure when this will happen, no matter how hard we try to predict the future. However, one thing remains certain. Humanity will make numerous remarkable discoveries in the future. Perhaps in 100 million years, these discoveries will unveil the complete history of the universe and ourselves for the people of the future. Imagine the vastness of outer space, often called the final frontier. It's like a giant canvas with stars, galaxies and nebulas all connected by cosmic threads. But what happens when we stumble upon a break in this grand design? Picture a space where the cosmic loom seems to have a flaw, creating an unimaginable emptiness. Think of an area so huge and vacant that even traveling at the speed of light, it would take over 330 million years to cross. This space is about 23 times larger than our Milky Way galaxy. It's a desolate region with very few galaxies, which challenges what we know about the structure of the cosmos. But here's the catch. This isn't just something out of a sci-fi story. It's a real mystery in our universe. Welcome to the Great Void, a cosmic puzzle, a vast dark space that's beyond our understanding of the universe and how it formed. 
To truly grasp our journey into this cosmic void, let's rewind the clock. Imagine the late 1700s when astronomers first toyed with the idea of cosmic voids. It was a time of exciting discoveries in astronomy, thanks to the invention of the telescope. With this new tool, astronomers could explore the vastness of the universe more precisely. As they mapped out the Milky Way, they were amazed by the immense structures hiding beyond their sight. Fast forward to the 1900s, where modern telescopes and improved observation methods changed our understanding of the universe. Astronomers soon realized that our Milky Way is just one of billions of galaxies in an incredibly vast cosmos. When they looked at how galaxies are spread out, they noticed something strange. Some areas had way fewer galaxies than they expected. At first, they thought it was just a weird quirk in their observations. But later on, these areas got a name, cosmic voids. It wasn't until the later half of the 1900s that people really started paying attention to cosmic voids. In the 1970s and 80s, studies using redshifts, a way to measure how far away galaxies are, showed that the universe's structure isn't random at all. Instead, galaxies seem to form a kind of cosmic web, leaving huge empty spaces in between them. As digital technology and stronger telescopes emerged in the late 1900s and early 2000s, our understanding of cosmic voids grew. Projects like the Sloan Digital Sky Surveys and 2DF Redshift Studies gave us detailed 3D maps of the universe, helping us grasp these cosmic voids better. From the early hints by astronomers to today's advanced tools, exploring cosmic voids has been a fascinating part of our journey to understand the universe. But even with all our progress, these vast empty spaces still baffle scientists. The Great Void, in particular, is quite mysterious. As we delve into its secrets, we're eager to learn how it formed. When astronomers looked closely at how galaxies are spread out, they noticed something interesting. Instead of being scattered randomly, galaxies on a grand cosmic scale grouped together to form intricate networks called the cosmic web. This web consists of galaxy clusters, threads connecting them and huge, empty spaces in between. These voids are massive areas with fewer galaxies, unlike the crowded clusters and threads of the cosmic web. Understanding the universe's big picture was crucial in unraveling the mystery of cosmic voids. These voids aren't just empty spaces without galaxies, they're vital pieces of the cosmic puzzle. Now that we've navigated through the cosmic maze and discovered these voids, Let's take a closer look at one of the most enigmatic voids we've confirmed, the Great Void. Welcome to the Bhutas Void, named after the constellation it's in. Astronomer Robert Kirshner and his team discovered it in 1981, and it's one of the largest voids we've found. How big is it? Well, it's about 330 million light years across. To give you an idea, if you traveled at the speed of light, it would take you 330 million years to go from one side to the other. That's about 23 times wider than our Milky Way galaxy. Bhutis Void isn't just big, it's really empty too. In a space where we'd normally expect to find 10,000 galaxies, there are only 60 in Bhutis Void. Think of it like a vast desert in space, surrounded by a crowded cosmos full of galaxies. The existence of such a massive empty space challenges the idea that the universe should look roughly the same in all directions when viewed on a large scale. But the mysteries of Boerter's void don't stop there. Some galaxies in the void are arranged in a strange tube-like structure, and we're not entirely sure why. As we continue our journey through the cosmos, our next stop is another significant empty space called a supervoid. The one we're heading towards is called the Eridanus Supervoid. It's not just any void, it's a supervoid. This massive structure, named after the constellation it's in, is one of the largest things ever discovered in the universe. To put it in perspective, the Eridanus Supervoid stretches about one billion light years across. If you could travel at the speed of light, it would take an astonishing one billion years to go from one end to the other. The Eridanus supervoid is not only really big, but it's also surprisingly empty. 
While it's not as lacking in galaxies as Bootas Void, it's still much emptier compared to the rest of the galaxy-filled universe. What makes the Eridanus Super Void so interesting isn't just its size or emptiness. It's also connected to something mysterious called the cold spot of relic radiation. A cold spot of relic radiation is a colder area in the cosmic microwave background, which is like the leftover glow from the Big Bang. Some scientists think that the Eridanus supervoid might be causing this cold spot. The giant empty space could be causing something called the Sachs-Wolf effect, where photons lose energy passing through it, making a colder spot in the relic radiation. As we explore more of these vast empty spaces in the cosmos, we stumble upon another one, the Keynes Venetici supervoid. This supervoid, found in the constellation of the Hound Dog, shows us just how enormous our universe can be. Like other supervoids, Canes Venetici has way fewer galaxies than we'd expect. To understand its size, think about this. It's a massive 1.2 billion light years across, about eight times wider than our Milky Way galaxy. If you traveled at the speed of light, it would take you over a billion years to cross it. In the vast forest of galaxies, the Hound Dog Supervoid sticks out like a big empty spot, almost like a cosmic desert. But how did such a huge empty space come to be? What happened in the early days of the universe to make this massive void? While we're not entirely sure how voids like this form, there are some interesting theories. One idea revolves around something called cosmic inflation. This theory suggests that right after the Big Bang, the universe expanded really quickly, stretching space itself. During this expansion, Tiny fluctuations at the quantum level might have gotten magnified on a cosmic scale, creating areas with higher and lower density in space. Over billions of years, matter gathered in the denser regions, forming clusters of galaxies and filaments, while the less dense areas were left empty, eventually becoming cosmic voids. Another theory involves dark energy, a mysterious force that's making the universe expand faster and faster. Dark energy might have played a role in creating these empty spaces by pushing galaxies away from areas with fewer objects to places with more, essentially making these empty spots even bigger over time. Furthermore, the formation of cosmic voids might be connected to how matter and the universe gathered together due to gravity, creating structures like galaxies and clusters. In the spaces left behind, voids naturally emerged. It's like the universe builds material structures around empty areas. These are just a couple of the theories scientists are exploring to understand how these cosmic anomalies form. But as vast and puzzling as these huge voids are, they're just a small piece of the complex cosmic puzzle scientists are still trying to solve. Understanding the exact processes behind the creation of voids is a tough task because they're still quite mysterious. One big challenge comes from the enormous scale and complexity of the universe itself. It's massive, with countless galaxies, each with its own unique features. Figuring out how these galaxies interact and contribute to the overall structure of the cosmos is a huge job. Adding to the complexity are dark matter and dark energy, mysterious forces that we can't see but are thought to play a big role in shaping cosmic structures and voids. However, our understanding of these forces is still in its early stages. Because we're not entirely sure what dark matter and dark energy are made of, it's hard to figure out exactly how they affect the formation of voids. But researchers are working hard in this field, using increasingly advanced tools and techniques from state-of-the-art telescopes to complex computer simulations to uncover the secrets of these vast empty spaces. Surveys like the Sloan Digital Sky Survey show us how galaxies are spread out in the universe. This gives us really important info for studying cosmic voids. And with computer simulations, we can recreate how the universe has evolved under different conditions. 
This helps us test out theories about how voids form, getting us closer to figuring out where these big cosmic gaps come from. Each time we discover something new or get more data, we're getting closer to understanding it all. These huge voids are super important in cosmology, the study of the universe and how it's put together. For one thing, they give us a unique view of dark matter and dark energy, two things we can't see, but are major players in the universe. Dark matter is like the glue holding the big structures of the universe together. Its gravity helps form the cosmic web of galaxies and voids. The fact that these huge voids exist tells us that dark matter has had a big hand in shaping the universe as we know it. And dark energy, this mysterious force pushing the universe to expand faster and faster, might also have a role in making these voids bigger. By pushing galaxies away from areas with fewer objects, dark energy could be causing these voids to swell up over really long timescales. But cosmic voids aren't just big empty spaces, they're super important for helping us understand the universe better. They can actually tell us a lot about our current theories and models of how the universe works. For example, we can use the size and layout of these voids to check if our theories about the universe are on the right track. If a theory can accurately predict things about these voids, it shows that the theory is probably pretty solid. But if there are differences between what our models say and what we see in the voids, it could mean we need to tweak our theories or even come up with entirely new ones. Matter of fact, studying these giant empty spaces has led to some pretty wild ideas that stretch beyond what we know about the universe. One idea is about alternate universes or what some call a multiverse. This theory suggests that our universe might not be the only one out there. There could be lots of universes existing alongside ours. And some theorists think that these huge voids might be more than just empty areas. They could be doorways or connections to these other universes. This idea comes from certain interpretations of quantum mechanics and string theory, which suggest that there could be extra dimensions beyond the ones we're used to, like up, down, left, right, and forward, backward. If these extra dimensions exist, they might contain all sorts of other universes, each with its own rules and characteristics. However, it's important to understand that this idea is still more of a guess than a proven fact. While it's intriguing and has inspired many stories in science fiction, most scientists aren't fully convinced of its validity yet. As of now, there's no solid evidence to support the idea of alternate universes or extra dimensions. Now, let's go back to the connection between the vastness of space and the tiny world of quantum physics that we mentioned earlier. This concept focuses on something called quantum fluctuations, where particles and energy pop in and out of existence in a tiny quantum-sized realm. But how does this relate to the huge cosmic voids in space? Well, it takes us back to the very beginning of the universe, right after the Big Bang. At that time, the universe was incredibly small and hot. In such extreme conditions, quantum effects could have a big influence on how things turned out as the universe grew. These quantum fluctuations, happening at such a small scale, might have had a ripple effect as the universe expanded. Over billions of years, these fluctuations could have led to some areas having less stuff than others, creating the vast cosmic voids we see today. In this way, the great voids are like ancient signatures left behind by the quantum fluctuations of the early universe. Confirming such a theory is no easy task. It requires precise measurements of the universe's large-scale structure and a deeper understanding of both quantum physics and cosmology. But the idea of linking the tiniest quantum realm to the vast cosmos is quite tempting. Another fascinating theory takes us into the realm of topology, a branch of mathematics dealing with space and its properties. In the universe, topological anomalies, or space defects, are like irregularities in the fabric of space-time, similar to flaws in a piece of fabric. These anomalies might represent areas where the usual structure of space-time is disrupted. But where did these anomalies come from? To find out, we need to rewind to the inflationary period just after the Big Bang. During this incredibly rapid expansion, the universe grew a lot. 
While this expansion made the distribution of matter and energy more even, it might also have amplified tiny irregularities in space-time, creating what we call topological defects. These defects could then act as regions where matter couldn't easily gather, eventually leading to the formation of the vast, empty spaces we know as cosmic voids. To understand cosmic voids better, let's delve into one of the universe's most mysterious phenomena, black holes, specifically primary black holes. Unlike the black holes formed from collapsing massive stars, primary black holes are believed to have existed shortly after the Big Bang. They might have been born from extreme density fluctuations in the early universe. Now, you might be wondering, how do these ancient black holes relate to our cosmic voids? Well, one idea suggests that these voids might be home to numerous primary black holes. According to this notion, the large voids we observe could be due to the abundance of these ancient black holes lurking within them. Since they don't emit much radiation, spotting them directly is quite challenging. The presence of these black holes affects things around them with their gravity, making the space around them empty. Another idea connects the origins of cosmic voids with something mysterious called dark matter. We can't see dark matter like we see normal matter, but scientists think it makes up about 85% of all the matter in the universe. Dark matter is super important because it helps build up cosmic structures, like a giant web that connects galaxies. These dark matter strands, called filaments, act like support beams for the universe, helping galaxies and clusters of galaxies form in the right places. That is going to be the end of today's documentary. Thank you guys so much for watching the first episode on the Space Drift channel. We have lots of interesting documentaries lined up. So if you are into astronomy and science, be sure to subscribe. With that being said, take care everyone.